Hi, Dr. Ken Starr with the Wellness Group in Arroyo Grande, California, your source for addiction medicine information. I wanted to take just a few minutes to tell you about the Sinclair Method. The Sinclair Method. What is it? The Sinclair Method is using a daily dose of naltrexone to gradually decrease and moderate your drinking. Okay? It is a slow, gradual process that involves taking a medicine called naltrexone that's available in a 50 milligram tablet, taking it once a day, about an hour before you drink, day after day after day. And what happens is people gradually, slowly reduce their drinking, moderate their drinking, and sometimes stop drinking. Okay, so that's what it is. Who's it for? Number one, it's not for somebody on chronic pain medicine because you can't be on an opiate because they'll throw you into withdrawal. Also, it's not for binge drinkers. If you're someone who's sober all week and then just drinking too much on Friday, Saturday night, this is not a program for you because it involves daily drinking, okay? It's really for someone who's a daily heavy drinker and they're really trying to reduce or moderate their drinking. Again, there's a whole other question about if you really have an alcohol use disorder, should you, you really probably shouldn't be drinking at all. I'm not commenting on that. I'm just meeting people where they are and presenting treatment options and helping, and helping explain what this is, okay? So what are the benefits? Well, one benefit is that there's no medical detox. So you don't have to stop drinking and be abstinent right? You just gradually, slowly reduce your drinking. So that's good. You don't have to go into rehab. You don't have to go into an intensive treatment program. You don't have to leave home. You don't have to leave work. It's a gradual, slow program. So the other benefits are cost, right? The medicine's inexpensive. It's available anywhere. So that's really good. So those are the main treatments. What is naltrexone? It's an opiate receptor blocker. So the final common pathway, if you're drinking alcohol or you're using opiates or pain pills, the final common pleasure pathway is dopamine mediated and mu opiate receptor mediated. So even the alcohol ligand forms uh, uh, a complex that binds the reward receptors that gives you that pleasure. So if you're genetically wired to drink too much or you have developed a habit over many years of coping by self-medicating with alcohol, when you drink, you get, you feel good, you feel better, you get your own happy hour. When you block that with naltrexone, what you're really doing is you're just blocking the pleasure pathway from alcohol. You're not affecting the metabolism. It's not an abuse that makes you sick. You're not affecting tolerance. You're not affecting intoxication. You're still getting drunk. You're still getting, you know, whatever. You're just not getting that rewarding and reinforcing effect of alcohol. Okay, so gradually as that dulls and dulls and dulls through a process of extinction, that's how it works, through a process of extinction, um, then people drink less. You're not getting the reward signal, you stop doing the behavior. Again, this doesn't happen once, it happens gradually. I used to think, and I think most doctors used to think that, well, it just naltrexone itself decreases cravings. It kind of does for some people, but that's really not how it works. And most people who take naltrexone feel like it doesn't really work that well for decreasing cravings. I think if you're just gonna be on it for craving reduction, you should look at gabapentin or baclofen. But it is a role, it is safe, it, F it is FDA approved for that, but just naltrexone alone decreasing cravings, the, the science doesn't support that. It decreases this learned reward. So that's what the Sinclair method is. Again, it's a gradual reduction in pleasure associated with drinking. Patients keep a drink diary, they measure their amount of drinking. Well, what can you expect? The first month, you're only getting a 10 or 20% reduction in drinking, so it's not huge. But if you look at the data six months to 12 months out, most of these patients report a 70 to 100% reduction in drinking. So that's pretty good. The Sinclair method still doesn't obviate the need for doing the worker recovery. If you're doing the Sinclair method, you're gradually reducing your drinking, I encourage you to still do the programming, still do the support still do AA, still have a sponsor, still have a support community, someone you're, you're working with, maybe a counselor, maybe a therapist, or whatever is working for you, maybe smart recovery, maybe it's refuge recovery, but still integrate it as part of a recovery solution. Again, a pill is not the answer to the problem, you need a program. But for some people, a pill can be part of the solution if an abstinence and a detox is not um, alone sufficient. It's a little atypical, I don't think most doctors and healthcare providers and drug and alcohol treatments use it. They're really still abstinence-based model. But again, part of this field of medicine is meeting people where they are. This may not be the right method for you. You may have a serious alcohol use disorder and you need to stop drinking, go into detox and get clean and sober and start to do the worker recovery. But if you're a candidate for this, um, it could work. So I just wanted to explain what this is and who's it for. 
If you have any questions or comments, please leave them. I would ask that you share this video with other people. And of course, please subscribe to our channel so we can get this information out there. Thanks so much.